Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back. So, in our previous lecture, we have solved for uh, weight estimation problem, where uh, the UAV that we have considered has to perform a surveillance mission for two hours with carrying a payload of, e which is uh, electro optical and IR sensor, which weighs about 1 kg with a flight velocity of 30 meters per second. What we are asked to do is, what will be the total take of weight of the system if, if the flight happens at 15 L by D, L by D of 15, right? if the corresponding cruise flight happens at 15 L by D and then uh, we were also given the data about efficiency, right. So, we have solved this by, by the means of this subroutine where we have considered the weight and the ratios uh, and the like weight ratios from the baseline. UAV which was uh, given from the data like in the question itself and then uh, what we did is uh, after considering the efficiency so efficiency of the propeller right various efficiency factors here then we proceeded to figure out what is the battery weight for the initial uh, iterations we considered the baseline weight to start with and then for this particular mission requirement what will be the weight of the battery required thereby updating the total weight of the aircraft right and using it to compare or uh, using uh, and finding out the error with respect to the previous weight right which uh, the the baseline aircraft right for the first iteration so the previous weight will be the baseline uh, aircraft weight for the first iteration here and then we compared the error and we checked if it is uh, less than 10 power minus 10 then it will stop right the code will stop so that means so for, from the first iterations where the uh, so during this first iterations first while loop here during this first while loop what we did is like uh, we updated battery weight right and the overall weight but this weight uh, structural weight and propulsion weight are estimated using weight fractions yes of course we'll keep the weight fraction same for throughout this process but based upon the initial baseline aircraft weight now the need is to upgrade them to the current aircraft weight so what we did is after this first while loop Right. So, again the structural weight is updated by means of the current weight of the aircraft which was obtained from the above loop right, where the battery weight has been updated based upon the current mission requirements. Right. So, from there the weight of the propulsion system is also upgraded. Now, the weight, now this structural weight and the propulsion weight corresponds to the current UAV for the current mission requirements. Right. So, similar, uh, so this weight that was output from this earlier while loop will now become the input for the second while loop which will again because of the change in the weights of the structural and propulsion systems. So, the battery weight or the power requirement will also change as the overall weight has to change. So, the battery weight has to change right. So, and hence uh, we have iterated it again to figure out what is the updated weight of the aircraft. So, the final weight of the aircraft we obtained after this second while loop for a particular L by D. So, this for loop iterates for different L by D starting from 11 to 16 with an increment of 1 right. So, for each and every L by D, we are trying to find out what is the total take or total uh, weight of the aircraft. We are estimating total weight of the aircraft. During the process, uh, we also figured out what is what should be the total battery weight for that particular L by D, what should be the structural weight as well as propulsion weight and we have plotted that. right? So, from the plot, we noticed that from the question, uh, we, so in the question we were asked like what will be the total takeoff weight when we are flying at L by D 15. So, it will be about 8.1 kg. Now, let us consider this as an input and the L by D as an input as well as the flight velocity as an input to figure out what should be the typical planform geometry or planform parameters or, or what should be the typical wing planform geometry that helps us to fly this aircraft at the desired velocities as per the mission requirements. right? So, that means we are going to get the planform geometry with the uh, method that we are going to use right now or the subroutine that we are going to develop. Okay. So, what we are going to do here, let us write down the example. Okay. So, this is another example 
or subroutine for plan form geometry selection. So, estimate with the plan form geometry of the UAV considered in the previous example. perform the same surveillance mission. The surveillance mission is for 2 hours, right. So, that means, so we will consider the same uh, mission requirements here. So, where the velocity has to be 20 meters per second sorry 30 meters per second it should be. So, the velocity is 30 meters per second and then the flight time is about uh, 2 hours right. These are the typical uh, mission requirements that we have considered earlier along with this parameters right. So, but what do we require right now is the following we just need because with all other parameters including structural weight ratio and propulsion weight ratio as well as payload and propulsion weight uh, sorry efficiency factor and then electrical efficiency factor and motor efficiency factor. So, including all this we have figured out that the aircraft when flying at L by D of you know, 15 it has to weight weigh about 8.1 kg. So, this is what is required for us to go ahead with the plan form geometry selection right. So, what exactly the plan form has to do here let us say. So, I am trying to erase this part. So, the apart from 30 meters per second what we have is L by D of uh, 15 and the total weight of the aircraft is 8.1 kg. These are the things that we are going to take it as an input. Right. So, now as we know the UAV so UAV when performing this mission. So, the first and foremost thing that we expect is at this particular flight velocity right what is the corresponding C L that I need to generate. So, that I can like satisfy that lift is equal to weight condition right. So, I can lift this total uh, otherwise I can generate a force which can sustain the total weight of the aircraft in, right. So, which is half rho v square s c l is equals to w. So, I am flying at a particular velocity which means the c l so which is designed is not it. So, we are going to design the aircraft to fly at that particular flight condition right. So, the design C L depends upon twice the wing loading times rho v square right or v infinity square or v design. So, v design is here how much 30 meters per second that is what we have to design it for about. So, C L design is 2 times d w 2 times w by s upon rho v d square right. Now, so assuming this particular plan form. So, the plan form here the plan form parameter that comes into this L is equals to W is area of the wing is not it area of the plan form. So, that is the only thing that I require to design in the first place and then we will see how to we using that plan form how can I achieve that particular CL design that we will look into like look uh, the, then we have to look into the cross sectional properties of that is not it. So, the wing here for example, if you take the top view of this right of this UAV. So, 
if you if you consider the top view of this UAV. So, the wing that you are going to design here, right? So, the plan form here. So, this platform here is responsible for generating the lift, right? This particular, uh, yeah, when moving at this particular velocity will generate the lift combined with some CL value here, non dimensional lift. So, the CL here talks about the cross sectional property, right? At e, so, this talks about uh, like you need to talk about the cross section of the wing there. That means you need to talk in terms of CL alpha, CL naught alpha design and alpha at which CL is equals to 0, right. So, this will handle for the time being we assume that that CL is provided, this CL design is provided given I have certain W by S, right, ok. So, how to achieve that? So, that means I need to know what should be the S. When I say S, I need to talk about what? The span of the UAV, is not it? Span of the wings or say root chord of the wings CR here. So, this say this is my CR and CT, CT am I correct or not CR, CT, B. So, based upon this I can talk about wing platform area am I correct or not. So, but it is always uh, better to deal in terms of non dimensional parameters before actually uh, talking in terms of this dimensional uh, variables like CR, CT and B here right. So, the non dimensional parameters for wing platform are aspect ratio which is B square upon S right and taper ratio lambda or taper T r taper ratio is lambda is C t upon C r right. Now, if I consider, so now the question is if I know here, if I know S right and A r I will be able to find out what is the span of the UAV for that particular S and aspect ratio. Am I correct? So, now once I know what is uh, S, right? S is equals to once I know B. So, what is B by 2 times C r times 1 plus lambda? If I know lambda, if lambda is known, right? Or say I can make it a variable as well, right? If lambda is known, I can find out what is C r. C r is 2 times S upon B times 1 plus lambda, right? For a straight tapered wing. So, when there is sweep back, sweep and all, right, then you consider the cause of leading edge sweep or any of, any of the leading edge sweep. So, that I am not going to talk about here. So, I am talking about a straight tapered wing here. And then CR and what about, so I know B, I know CR, right. Once lambda is known, I can also find out CT, CT is equals to CR times lambda. Okay. So, that I, that means I know what is CT, what is CR, what is B. These are good enough parameters to talk about platform area. So, this is what we are going to find out. So, what we are going to take as an input is the weight of the UAV that we have estimated and the L by D which we are flying, is not it? So, and what is the velocity of flight? So, these three are the parameters that we are going to take it in for this particular algorithm, right? So, what am I doing right now? So, let us write a new script. So, I am not going to write down the detail like steps there, it is I do not think that is necessary. So, and then yeah, altitude. So, you need to know what is the altitude of flight as well. Let us assume it is at 3 kilometers surveillance mission at. So, what was the earlier question surveillance mission is it? So, it was not mentioned there. So, let us consider this, this is happening at, at surveillance at 2 kilometers altitude, uh, 2000 meters. 2000 meters. Okay. So, that means we have to use the density function that we have developed earlier, right. So, let us now start the new new algorithm, uh, sorry, new, new, new subroutine. So, what I am going to have here is first enter the altitude, right, is not it? Input. I am taking the inputs in the first place, enter the 
altitude of flight in meters. And then V is so crew input, enter the cruise velocity or design velocity, right? enter the design velocity or desired velocity of flight from the mission requirements, right? velocity of flight. See, we may not be able to generalize the design process. So, this based upon the mission requirements, you have to figure out which kind of subroutine you have to develop right? with, with the respective variables. Since we have velocity as an input here, so I am considering it as a desired velocity here. Right? So, the surveillance has to happen at a particular velocity. So, W from the weight estimation algorithm, right? so let us say this small W, I am considering it, it as an input. input enter the weight of the estimated weight of the aircraft estimated weight of the uav of uav otherwise okay in kg so this is multiplied by g will give me right 9.81 will help me to find out weight in newtons otherwise capital w is like small w times 9.81 meter per second square so i have z v w and capital w right now so what is design cl so for, for me to find out so l by d is also an input but it is rarely used here other than finding cd naught and k we will we'll use them we will use those parameters anyways so I need to find out what is C L design, right? C L underscore design, C L D underscore D is two times of W upon S, isn't it? Otherwise, W underscore S upon den, right? So I need to find out the density. Den is equals to density of Z. Then, so, this will help me to find out what is the density at that particular altitude. So, z is the altitude that we are considering, altitude of flight that we are considering. So, d e n s i t y is the function name. So, I am calling that function. So, this is like 2 star w underscore s is wing loading, let us say. So, so, wing loading upon density times v square, right? Okay. So, th that means we understood that okay, for a given flight velocity at a given altitude, so if the wing load is vary, varies, the CL design varies, right? That means, so wing loading we considered it as a variable of this iteration, right? So, it varies. C D of i comma j. Uh, that means so i stands for the current iteration, which means wing loading w underscore s per for w underscore s varying from say wing loading is varying from four to ten. Let us say okay with an interval of one. Okay, so before this what I would like to do is i is equals to 0. So, inside this loop i is a variable of this iteration which is increase, increasing by 1 for every iteration. So, this is 2 w by s upon rho v square C L design. Right? So, we what is j here we have uh, so there is also a variable j we will try to get back to that soon otherwise I will use it when we define that. Right. So, this is i. So, i comma 1 will uh, return me a column vector. So, I prefer to use column vectors here and then C L design is now varying with w by s. 
So, for each and every w by s there is C L design right. So, how can I find s from here? Yes. Or so that means for each and every w by s there is right there is n s am i correct or not where w by s is a variable here so w underscore s is wing loading in newton per meter square ok. So, C L design is C L D C L design. So, wing area based upon input weight and wing loading right. So, w upon w by s will return me s in meter square here ok. So, once I have s I will be able to find out b am I correct b of i comma 1 is equals to. So, uh, square root of square root of aspect ratio times s of i comma 1 right. So, now it is a tricky part is not it we do not know what is aspect ratio here right. So, let us now iterate aspect ratio also for different aspect ratio s q r t yes. So, so let us now make it a variable aspect ratio. So, let a r is varying from say 4 to 4 to 10 again the same let us assume. So, with the increment of 1 right. So, w ok ok. So, uh, let me call this as small w s which is in kg per meter square ok. So, I am converting this kg per meter square multiplied by 9.81 so that it becomes in Newton per meter square ok. So, this w s let us say capital w s itself right. So, is in kg per uh, meter square when multiplied by 9.81 I what I am going to get is uh, yeah Newton per uh, so yeah Newton per meter square. So, w here is in Newton. So, w by s is in kgs. So, either I use small w here so that it is in kg right. So, it returns in kg per meter square. So, b for b I need to have uh, aspect ratio as an input. So, aspect ratio is varying here. So, I will in I will use this another uh, variable of this outer loop right what is j. So, here j is increasing for every aspect ratio increment in aspect ratio. So, particular so a value of j corresponds to a particular aspect ratio here ok. So, I would like to store this uh, so, sm small a r let us say of aspect ratio or a underscore r otherwise aspect ratio I am storing it just for storing purpose. So, is j comma 1 is equals to a r ok. So, now aspect ratio is an input s is an input to find out what is b based upon wing loading and the initial weight. So, we figured out what is s here right. So, if you want me to change this as small w underscore so that will make more sense small w is in kg right kg multiplied by 9.81 will be newtons right. So, so once we have span of the uav we can find out uh, root chord right span and area and aspect ratio uh, say. So, the root chord we for in order to find root chord what we require is lambda as an input trapper ratio right. So, this is 2 times of s of i comma 1 upon 
So here, if you see, see the span, neither span or the area is affected by this uh, taper ratio here, right? Isn't it? So, so that's why it majorly plays between root chord and tip chord. That is how I prefer uh, using it, right? So, so that is uh, so the CR here is two S upon B times B of I again. It's a variable here inside B of I comma J. So now, whatever I here should be replaced by j for a particular aspect ratio right so all these calculations are for particular aspect ratio the inner loop runs for a particular ar that is runs for a particular j value here right? so the i progression here happens with j input so if i want to save this wing what i can do is capital w underscore s right this is just for storage purpose so of i comma j okay wing loading so wing loading will be again will be same for right isn't it similar to that of what we witnessed in our previous uh, yeah, subroutines so for each for every j the column vector of uh, w comma s will remain same right because we are varying it right we are forcing it to vary with this uh, like from 4 to 10 with an increment of 1. So, this is equals to w underscore yes. So, I am using this wing loading for a particular j and this keeps increasing from 4 to 10 right. So, to calculate CL design and then yes span root chord. So, root chord requires an input here right lambda is an input here 1 plus lambda 2 s upon b times 1 plus lambda. So, so, lambda is taper ratio, let us say lambda is 1 plus T r taper ratio. Okay. So, I am not considering taking in uh, another uh, iteration like another loop here for taper ratio instead I, you can you can do that, but instead I would like to do it here for a particular taper ratio let it be 0.4. Okay. So, either you can consider this as an input, you can make it as an input here instead of w because w is already uh, done earlier so velocity of flight is also more or less known let's let me let me make this also an input here uh, so taper ratio tr is enter the taper ratio of uav of UAV. UAV. So, we made this also as an input. So, I get taper ratio from there and it remains constant for this entire iteration. right? So, you can plot multiple like for various aspect ratio you get for different w by s you will get to know what is the corresponding like uh, root chord, tip chord and the span and the wing area to generate the desired CL. Right? So, based upon this data you find out what is like now you change the taper ratio right you change the input and find out the same plot so that you have uh, you can also cross plot them to compare or uh, to figure out which taper ratio uh, is more feasible for you to manufacture right so s upon and uh, and also we have discussed in length about what is the significance of taper ratio and how it will help for the aerodynamic loading as well right so we have discussed in our previous uh, course so you can refer to those lectures 2s upon b times 1 plus lambda okay so this makes sense so i'll just write it down so wing span wing span based on ar and aspect ratio and a wing area right okay and then root chord wing CR or root chord based on aspect ratio or say B span and taper ratio. Okay. So, what is CT straightforward? CT is 
cr times lambda isn't it cr i comma j times stepper ratio stepper ratio is an input again see so, so can we find out so l by d in the earlier case is what cl underscore cd is 15 here that is an input so we can also find out what is cd for this l by d right cd underscore let us assume d right design of i comma j is equals to cl underscore d of i comma j which is varying with wing loading right so upon c cl by cd right cl underscore cd so which is constant right? and then we can find out what is k right Oswald's efficiency factor k so so first e first let us we have to find out e to figure out what is k so e of e again can be find figured out from this uh, empirical relationship value of e can be estimated using this empirical relationship based upon the aspect ratio of the wing 1.78 times 1 minus 0 0.045 aspect ratio raised to the power of 0 0.68 this is for a straight tapered wing minus 0 0.64 minus 0 0.64 right using this expression we will be able to identify what is e oswald's efficiency factor for a straight tapered wing and again it's it's based upon this empirical relationship so it is like 1.78 star so 1 minus 0.045 times aspect ratio raised power of 0. Point minus 0. Point. So aspect ratio is a variable here. So every time uh, it will try to find out what is the new e. So for a given aspect ratio, that means for a for a given j, this e value uh, remains constant, right? That means uh, so it it only varies. So what we can do is instead of doing this here, we can calculate it outside no? since it just depends upon the aspect ratio what we can do is this e is equals to okay so this is just j comma 1 okay so what we can say is oswald's efficiency factor So once we know E, it's straightforward to calculate what is induced drag correction vector. So which varies with E and aspect ratio. Again, this is this can be out of this inner loop, right? It doesn't depend upon wing loading. So E K of I comma J, sorry J comma one. should be 1 upon pi e a r okay this is uh, induced drag correction factor induced drag correction factor or factor induced drag so cd cl by cd so cd not i can estimate for this particular this thing cd is 0 or say directly cd not of i comma j is equals to cd underscore design of i comma j minus k times k of j comma 1 times k c l underscore d square d of i comma j square this is a profile drag and this is uh, uh, 
uh, ring tip cord. So track coefficient at CL design. So based upon so this is zero lift independent track coefficient or zero lift track coefficient. This. zero lift track coefficient right based on this parameters that uh, cl cd track coefficient cl design and cl by d right so l by d is an input so cd naught is figured out so now i think it's a uh, end of the iteration first iteration and you can end the second iteration as well here okay so the outer loop is closed as well as the inner uh, sorry not the second iteration i'm sorry so end of this inner loop and end of the outer loop. So we can now plot what are the, how are these parameters varying with wing loading, right? So let's say this is uh, figure one. So subplot, subplot. Let it be what CL design CD corresponding CD, and then say S, B, C, T, C are these are the plan form parameters right for a given lambda here this is for a given lambda we have iterated for different aspect ratio as well as wing loading here right so that is what we have done here. So, let it be phi comma 1 comma 1 ok. So, plot what I am going to plot is wing loading. So, this is small uh, capital W underscore S again this is in kg. So, I am sorry. So, this is W S. So, wing loading and how C L design is varying right. So, wing loading will be more or less same for every you know, call and comma 1 for every uh, j the wing loading variation will be same because we are varying it from 4 to 10 as I told you. So, the C D design so will varies with aspect ratio. So, let us say call and comma 1 this is for initial aspect ratio here aspect ratio 4 we have 6 such plots here. So, try we will try to no, star k and then we will hold it on hold on I will just open our previous program. So, weight estimation program where we have similar figure that we have plotted to just oh, not in this what was that it was in uh, climb performance I guess we have used hold on right for different uh, plot I do not think even this is going to help us no? mm. ok. So, let us first save this we are do, what are we doing now uh, wing plan form geometry ok. So, we have this control C control V. So, this we are varying it to let us say this is like plus oh, oh. we can still have color code right is not it. So, 3 and 4. So, this is with red, this is with green. So, how many 1, 2, 3, 4 are done? 7 in total, right? From 7 to 10, it is like 7, is not it? Sorry, 4 to 10. So, this is like 5, 6. 7 done with the first plot. So, magenta and then black, blue, red, green, magenta, yellow, 
so there is no need to hold it on further this particular subplot so but uh, by label what we can mention is design cl uh, c underscore l underscore d the second plot we want to vary we want to see how the area is varying right isn't it but cl design it varies with wing loading not with aspect ratio isn't it am i correct or not so it is like same w by s it will not have the variation with uh, aspect ratio there is no point in doing this yeah i'm sorry because this is this is not going to vary with aspect ratio right so there is no need of holding it on and the simple y label is yeah so plot the second subplot uh, let's do it for Uh, say variation of s s in fact s will also not vary with aspect ratio it just depends upon wing loading right so wing loading is independent of aspect ratio here is another variable of this uh, iterations so cl design and s are independent of aspect ratio geometric parameters here so what i have is simple you no know, if you plot any one of this it will remain constant here right so plot ws there is no need for this entire story otherwise i'll just copy this so that i can use it for the other plots the third one so what i'm going to do is delete this and then simple yes here right sn meter square done so the third one will vary how the span is varying with the b so b is varying with aspect ratio b in meters and with the input of lambda we are able to find out what is a uh, root chord like cr and its variation with aspect ratio cr here right okay so we are plotting cr variation with aspect ratio for uh, like a cr variation for w by s and cross plotting for uh, and we are holding on the same plot and uh, we are superimposing for various aspect ratios here right cr variation with various aspect ratios and similarly we can do it for ct here c underscore r in meters there is capital r cr root chord and c underscore small t so it's done so the x label here is x label if you just want to see how the drag coefficient is varying then we can have another plot here just immediately after this uh, we can have another plot let's label it as 2 3 4 and cd is again of course it depends on l by d and yeah it depends upon c design and design l by, l by d for that particular design right so it is independent of aspect ratio here so we are not considering that here anyway so and k is independent of this uh, wing loading so cd not again is like uh, it can be outside but C, cl design yes is independent of aspect ratio here but k depends upon aspect ratio it will not depend upon wing loading but cl design depends upon wing loading but not on aspect ratio here right so we have added another plot in this in this subplot uh, this is more or less done variation with ct cr span and then cl design cd design and then the air, wing area how it is varying right 
so with respect to with respect to wing loading right wing in kg per meter square so i am just using kg per meter square here so wing loading variation in kg upon meter square uh, let's try to see if we can run this code so what is the altitude of flight it's in meters it is say 2000 meters 30 meters per second and weight of the ue is 8.1 kg taper ratio is 0.4 so you can now see if you insert legend here so insert legend yeah okay so black stands for aspect ratio 4 and it increases 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so so this color c and Uh, this no greenish blue right i call it that way so it corresponds to aspect ratio 10 right so if you look at this the wing area when you are flying at so this particular for these three parameters just depends upon wing loading here right so it is so the wing area turns out to be so at wing loading 10 it requires about 0.8 meter square right so when you are flying at a lesser wing loading for this mission requirements you end up yeah close to 2 meters per second here 2 meter square sorry yeah it is close to 2 meter square and the cl design is say it's far less when you are flying at a lesser wing loading isn't it Uh, it's about 0.08 it's not even 1 right 0.1 so and then when you are flying at uh, higher uh, w by s right isn't it so higher wing loading because the velocity is quite high here that's the reason why so this is about 0.25 yeah 0.22 right so the cd no cl design c cl design no this is cd design i'm sorry you, we need to correct correct it in the plot so the second one is cd design right cd cd for that cl design so i'm not uh, running it again here so this is about 0.115 when you're flying at wbs uh, of 10 kg per meter square so you can see the tip chord here is with the 0.4 aspect ratio see how the variation of uh, ct with respect to no uh, wing loading so the tip chord turns out to be about 16 cm right and the root chord turns out to be about for uh, what 0.4 45 yeah 40 cm so 40 cm will be the root chord and tip chord is 16 cm and the corresponding span of the uav is about 2.8 m so i am talking about wing loading of 10 here right 2.8 m approximately so when you are planning to uh, have a hand launch uav it should be at least w by s uh, should be at least uh, you know within 6 you know you should not go for higher w by s because you need higher launch velocity then right so say 6 the ct is about 20 cm or 21 cm close to and then the cr is about say half a meter you know half a meter of root chord and the span is about 6 me 3.6 meters 3.7 meters span for this particular uav which is weighing about 8.1 kg right so the area here is about 1.35 meters square and the drag that you may encounter is so this is quite less here 0.01 uh, close to right uh, and yeah so the design cl is about 0.13 okay so this is how we can uh, like uh, complete the plan form geometry selection so in the next lecture we'll we'll try to look at what is the cross sectional properties for this particular plan form what should be the cross sectional properties thank you mm -hmm.